The Mount Moriah Trust has been helping needy believers in God's land since 2001. And every year the Lord brings us new pastors and congregations that need help. And Jesus says, whoever accepts anyone whom I send accepts me. And we are rejoicing in the faithfulness of the Lord to his word and his promises. He has enlarged the place of our tent, the work of the Mount Moriah Trust, those whom we serve and those who support. He said that he would touch people's hearts to give by his Holy Spirit, and we are seeing just that. So we can say of the Lord, all that we have done, you have accomplished for us. He is carrying out his work and his enterprises through the Mount Moriah Trust. It is Jesus who's doing his work. We are here in Cormiel. Uh, it's in the middle of the region of the Galilee area. We have a congregation by name Kilata Derech, started in 1989. We are about 160 people gathering together every Shabbat and we have some challenges that we are trying to, to face them. One, it's absorption, the new immigrant. So many new immigrants are coming and we are trying our best to absorb them into the land. It's like a tree that they are cutting it from the, from the root and plant it in another place. It's a change of culture, not just change of language. Uh, the meeting itself, it's done in Hebrew and translation into the different languages with earphones. Uh, so this is one of the things that we are facing. The other things, it's we are in the periphery area of the land. It means less job, social economic, it's lower than in the middle of the country. The third subject that we are facing, it's the relationship with the Arab believers. In the Galilee regions, there is more Arabs than Jews. Among those Arabs, there is some that are believers. So our desire of us, the Messianic body in Israel, in the Galilee, and the Arab evangelical believers, it's to build bridges above the rivers of enmity among us and the Arabs. We are seeing the Messianic body of Christ growing and the Arab and Palestinian believers increasing. The one new man in Christ. God is love. His kingdom is love. Jesus' command is to love one another, to pray, to comfort, to encourage, to support, to help, and to rejoice. We are one in Christ Jesus. That is kingdom living. Some years ago, I met a Moriah Trust uh, I met Tony and Katie, and we started to have relationship between us. And through that relationship, they understand uh, our challenges. And the mainly, uh, as we are in the periphery, and we wanted to uh, encourage our young generation, the, the, the kids, the teenagers, the, the young adult, to achieve better for their uh, ability. So Tony and Katie are helping us uh, with this specific issue to help to the new generation, if it's uh, by having a guitar lesson, if it's uh, helping them to go to a summer camp or to activities like that. Emil, for example, had guitar lessons through Moriah Trust. Thank to Mount Moriah Trust for helping me to study guitar. If the Moriah Trust will not help, so, well, I cannot say that Emil will not study the way that he study, but it will be different. It will be much more difficult for him to achieve what it he achieved. If the Moriah Trust will not help us, so then uh, maybe we will need to cut the camp from three nights to two nights. So praise God, the Lord put Moriah Trust, they are helping us, and in that way we can help to reach out to the new generation.
then I took in uh, new responsibility, the church here. And then we pioneered another church in Romney. So we have two churches, and we have a home of new life. We have Bible school, and now we have seven students who are studying the, the Bible, two years of strict Bible, and three of them are Muslims. So we are open our home here for the children. Here are the children where they meet and eat and study and have fellowship and also play games. This is part of our boys. They sleep here. They have chores to do, uh, cleaning, uh, doing dishes, doing, uh, preparing the table. And Fadi is in seventh grade. Okay, Noor has been with us four years. Or what's new? Uh, five years. So we keep kids come here from first grade up to 12th grade if they would like to stay with us. And I'm a product of a home like this home myself. That's why this is, is my first love. We have been doing this for 39 years, serving the child uh, in, in this country. We send the children to school and we pay uh, tuition for them. And uh, they study at the Latin school. And it's a good, credible school that we send them to this. And this is our church here. We have on Sunday morning, 10.30, our main service. We minister each week to almost 150 people, with children, with women, with couples, with young people. Uh, we are thankful for Mount Moriah Trust for their help to the children. We have 50 children that we sponsor. Among those children, Mount Moriah sponsor as well. And we are thankful for them. And part of their money goes to feed the children and also to help them in their education. So continue to bless Mount Moriah as they bless us and as we bless the children. The Mount Moriah Trust is a faith ministry. We agree with our pastors how we're going to help them for the coming 12 months how much we're going to give them and how often and how it's going to be used. So in that respect, we're a faith ministry because we don't know that the money will be in the bank. But the Lord has said he will provide and he has always done this. He has kept his word faithfully. <laughs> Mount Mariah Trust um, has been supporting Fyodor, our leader and teacher, so that he is more available to lead meetings. Because Mount Mariah helps me with my salary, I have more time. It's great for me, as I can devote more time to the congregation, so I don't have to rush from work to the meetings and from meetings to work. The problem was that my work hours often coincided exactly with the meetings, so it was difficult to prepare for the ministry. I have to work to make a living, but this is wonderful assistance from Mount Moriah Trust as now I am much freer to prepare ahead of time, and our ministry is spread out over several places. There are meetings in Beichan, one in Afula, and one here in Givata More, a suburb of Afula. So there are several locations where I lead meetings three or four times a week. Lately, the Lord has challenged us to take up the burden of intercession for the Israel Valley. We uh, hope to connect with other congregations that have the same burden so we may form a wall of intercession here in our area. We know that there is an important future and that Israel Valley is strategically an important place in the spirit. So we are hoping to do the Lord's work in the valley. <music> The uh, Mount Mariah Trust supports me personally as the leader of congregation and it really helps me to spend more of my time to serve the people in our fellowship, to spend more time in prayer and in study the Word of God, prepare the sermons and visiting people and counseling people so I can dedicate uh, more of myself to the ministry.
Well, before I started to receive a regular support from uh, donors, I, I used to work in the factory and I had to work from 9 to 15 hours and I didn't have any time to prepare a message or to visit the people. So it really affected my ministry in a very negative way. So I'm so blessed that now uh, uh, the Mariah Trust can support me and I can dedicate more of my time for the ministry. Well, you've just seen our main sanctuary and this is our children's room. Um, six months ago, we did a big renovation of this building and we invested more than $15,000 and we were so happy about this. But the sad part of the story is that the religious people made a great pressure on the landlord and now he's asking us to leave this place so we can be here only a year and a half and uh, until the end of the contract. Both the Jewish and Arab believers have problems here in this land. The Jewish believers are persecuted by the ultra-Orthodox who do not believe that you can become a believer in Yeshua and remain Jewish. Therefore, they see us as missionaries trying to take away their Jewishness from them. The Arab believers too have problems with their Muslim neighbors. I'm uh, doing the Lord's work in East Jerusalem mostly. Uh, we're doing the Lord's work. We give the good news for mostly for Muslims. Without the good news, they cannot love anyone because they have the traitorate for Israeli and the Christian at the same time. So through Jesus Christ, they really can love Jews and Christian and everyone. This is what I'm trying. The Lord called me to do this among these uh, our our families, the Arab. Uh, background, Muslims background, to give them the good news. A few months ago, the Lord uh, gave us some uh, souls to come to the church and um, they come, they come to commit to the church and they're starting to, to commit and to come to hear the word of God through the good news. Some people heard about that we're, we're doing the Lord work well and the, the Muslims background, they did not like what we're doing among these uh, this area. Uh, they break through the windows and the church down and they go underneath and they took all the loudspeakers two here and two there and they took uh, um, the big um, big mixer and microphones and cables and the headphones and uh, they took we had here over here we have uh, um, org which has cost around two thousand dollars and they clean up the church and uh, also the projector. So they took mostly all, everything from the church and we came the other day, we told the police and uh, till now there is nothing. But we pray and we trust the Lord to move the, the hearts of the people who love the Lord and who love us to do the Lord work here in East Jerusalem. In 1986, I got uh, saved and I knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, since that time, I start to spread the word of God among the Palestinian and the Jewish. The Lord blessed me with the Hebrew, so also we are living among Jews. Also, we give the both side about Yeshua, how to know Yeshua, because Yeshua he is the salvation. He is he's the one who can give us eternal life. We met Tony and Kathy, the leaders of uh, uh, Mount Har Moriah, Mount Moriah. They, uh, from time to time, they are blessing our church really. And since that time, we are in a good relationship and we pray for them. And uh, they are really behind our work here in Jerusalem. And they love us and we love them too. And we ask the Lord to bless them as they can continue to bless us. <laughs> We are a refugee here. Yeah. We think ourselves uh, we are refugees, but uh, from the government and any uh, officials of the government, we don't have any document like that states we, whether we are refugees or not. Since we don't have any document, it's a very 
basic problem. My people here in the, our church community, or church members, almost they are Eritreans, but we have some 10 or not more than 10. Yeah, we have some Ethiopians. And some of my uh, community members or church members, some of them, they've been here five years, six years, seven years, and myself, I've been here in Israel for 10 years. And we don't have any statues that explain about uh, situation. So just we start a church, we rent a uh, hall like this one, but we face with the uh, municipal like the Arnuna bills. So since we don't have any uh, legal statues, we can't able to run to get the uh, reduction of like any other church or like any other synagogue. So we had a lot of debts from the municipality. Like if I told you, it's, it's, it's uh, a very a huge, huge number, like uh, 270 or 90,000 shekels we owe to the municipality. The Minister of Mount Moria uh, Trust, I know them in a very short period of time. Uh, quite I thankful for what they done for us. They think to help me, they uh, realize that we need help. So it's, it's a very nice idea, but I know them in the very short period of time. And they came and we, I share them my uh, ideas and they start to help me. Israel has the largest gap between the rich and poor in the developed world, according to the OECD. There are over two and a half million people living in poverty, which includes nearly a million children and 180,000 elderly, including Holocaust survivors. And although there are small social assistance payments available, these by no means cover the cost of rents, utilities and food. And in the Palestinian Authority areas, there's no assistance whatsoever. First of all, in the congregation we have many needy people, including pensioners, single parent mothers, so people need assistance, also because it's a small congregation. We really want to purchase new chairs because so many are elderly, it's a bit difficult to sit on the simple plastic chairs. And we want to continue the gospel outreach program because in the Ramle Lod area, there are many needy residents. When we opened the congregation in this area, we started ministering to non-believers, giving them assistance, like to single-parent mothers and Holocaust survivors. And this helps us in sharing the gospel. This is our new congregational room that is to serve as a distribution center for helping the needy. We plan to set up shelving in here to aid those who need this assistance, though we don't have the budget at present. I personally am a single parent with a 15-year-old autistic daughter. The assistance that I receive from the congregation is greatly appreciated, and I want to thank you for this. This assistance really helps the needy. We give out food parcels, no longer monthly, but once every three months. These food parcels go to new immigrants. It gives them a little extra something to help get by. We give needy congregational members food vouchers worth 200 shekels from Mount Moriah Trust as we have six or seven single parent mothers and two with handicapped autistic children. 
Our top priority is to help members of the congregation facing difficult financial situations. In addition, Mount Moriah Trust helps with part of my salary. This allows me to serve the congregation full time. It's a great help to us, so thank you. The House of Hope, I think, is the house which will uh, give hopes to some people who have no hope, like these uh, special need children, like the blind people, and this is started in 19. Uh, 65 this House of Hope work uh, and uh, in the beginning started only for uh, blind people but the need of the country and advices around us to add uh, for the uh, special needs children and now we have special needs children we have about 24 of them some are blind some special needs children the House of Hope uh, children that the majority are Muslims because they come from Muslims villages around Bethlehem. The villages there, they are poor villages, poor people, and they don't have really much care, you know. And they say that they can be taken care here in Bethlehem and in especially in the House of Hope. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has been that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice every day, every day. Most of the children, what we have here, they're coming from very far uh, villages around Hebron, around Jerusalem, Nablus, and most of them are very poor people. Uh, we take fees from them, yes, but never covers the expenses. And we trust God and his children. I say this is always. The other challenge to this, always we have at least 20 names on list, waiting always and insisting that to come and to be in the House of Hope. Even sometimes, and I encourage them, please, you have, like in Nablus or Hebron, they have so something similar. But they said, no, we want here, because you Christians, you love us and love our children. <laughs> and we pray to God that House of Hope would be able to have more children, you know, in age that will increase the age because we want it up to 17 years old, but we can't keep this because we have a pressure. The other thing to have more uh, children, uh, number of children to be in the House of Hope. Because when we want to increase the number of the children, we need more teachers. We need more house fathers, house mothers. We need more food. We need more ele for electricity, for water. Mount Mariah, I can say thank the Lord for them. They are part, or they have good part, of the responsibility to, especially because they send cash money, this help us to use it for the running goals, for daily use. And uh, House Moriah, it is a good part of this thing, and we praise the Lord for them. We are seeing the Messianic body of Christ growing and the Arab and Palestinian believers are growing too. The one new man in Christ, slowly coming together, which is pleasing to the heart of God. Jesus prayed to the Father for unity amongst the believers. He prayed, may they be brought to complete unity. God is love, his kingdom is love. Jesus' command is to love one another, to pray, to comfort, to encourage, to rejoice, to support the believers in Christ.
many of the issues are issues of growth because uh, since the last 30 years um, the body of Messiah has grown tremendously from about 300 Messianic Jewish believers in the 80s, early 80s, we are now been multiplying, in increasing. And so together with the growth, there are the needs that are linked to the growth. Spiritual needs of the people, the harvest is becoming plentiful. God is removing the veil upon the Jewish people. And uh, we see that uh, we are the first fruits of the, uh, a huge harvest. But as our Lord said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So our greatest need is really for workers not to sit on the fence and watching what's happening, but getting involved uh, into the harvest, which means bringing the gospel of salvation to the Jew first and the nations, but also discipleship, uh, training, pastoral ministry, uh, helps. And so we are just uh, calling forth the workers to come in and help us because we know that the harvest is coming and we witness it daily as we grow. So this is the spiritual needs, but also together with that, we have also the material need, the financial needs, because many of the people of the new immigrants who are coming, they come with almost nothing. We have people coming from, from the Ukraine, from uh, Africa, from India, different parts of the world where the congregation is really becoming their spiritual home, but also providing for their basic needs that the Israeli government is not providing at the moment. These are all the names we want to see in the Book of Life. Mount Moriah Trust is in fact helping uh, in these specific issues because as they approached us, they asked us if we had any needs related to poor, needy, new immigrants and also as we work a lot with uh, single mothers uh, they just came at the right place and at the right time to provide for very specific needs in the lives of individuals especially uh, single mothers who have uh, a difficult time to make a living because social security here in Israel is quite low as far as income is concerned so we are trying to help them to build a budget and through that to be able to pay the rent, school, books for the children and the different uh, basic needs that they would do. So we would distribute coupons for a supermarket and uh, you know food bags and so forth and, uh, and the Moria Trust has been really helping us with that. If we didn't have that support I think we will we will go back to the Lord and cry, Lord, send, <laughs> send other <laughs> donors. I believe this is the poor and the needies uh, are in the heart of the Lord. So God knows he will never let them without provision. So God has chosen Moria Trust to provide for them. Life for a believer here in the land is difficult. It's not so different from the time when Jesus and the apostles were here. They need our help and encouragement to grow and to blossom. I'm really happy to be in Eilat and to be a pastor of the congregation here and to reach people uh, because this is the vision of God and uh, God works through His church, through His body and uh, I'm really, ha uh, really happy to be in this in this work. For example, last money we used for the, um, the, uh, to buy this food, okay, particularly, and also we just waiting for the uh, next um, place will open and we just collect money also for renting. We want to rent it for one year at least, so that it will be open uh, every day. And there will be a worker, there will be volunteers also come and it will be open center so people can come here to get food, to get rest also, drink coffee, tea, you know, just to sit, hour, two hours. And we will have babysitters also, so this is our plans, and we will start it in 
Uh, I believe in one month or two months we will start it. So next year we will uh, actually uh, work in full volume on this. Uh, Morai Trust, they, uh, you can really help us. You can really um, bless us and support this center because we want to help more and more people. Uh, in our list, we, ha we have now about 70 people or 70 families actually, but in, in Lat we have about 800 families that we actually can reach and help. So we just starting to grow and uh, with your help and with your support we will grow more and more and bring God's love to people. Uh, we just uh, visit homes uh, of uh, people um, uh, that, we, that we help them also with food. We just ask them if they need the help like this one. So this week we have about uh, seven seven houses. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we help people that really cannot do it by themselves. Some uh, people have problem on, on on top floor, so the water just going down, and um, so we, we help to fix it. Uh, so these people usually uh, this is uh, veterans of World War II, yeah. also Holocaust survivors. Uh, they have uh, their own stories, you know. They have no um, their own struggles in the life. Um, some sometimes people live in very bad conditions, also financial. So we uh, actually focus our help in people like this and we want to find people that really need help. I had wanted to do this repair work on my apartment for the last three years. Then Ariel called and it was a miracle because I didn't even know him. So I'm very grateful that he brought these volunteers who have done such a professional job. Actually many people welcome to come to Elat and also uh, to be volunteers here and to work here for, the, for Christ and for his kingdom. The people, it's like angels. I'm Jewish and I'm not believe this, the, that people like this. I'm not believe good people in my heart. Uh, Mount Moriah Trust, uh, when you uh, send us your support, it really helps to buy food. We actually buy food uh, or furniture or uh, clothes. It depends on the needs. Okay, So we actually talk with people what they really need. If they need help in, with food, so we buy food and bring food. Sometimes it helps to, for example, uh, people with children, uh, we buy um, books for school or for something you know just help also to pay uh, school uh, expenses a lot uh, because it is situated so far from the center uh, all um, distribution centers are in in the middle of the country and uh, everywhere and in a lot we don't have nothing actually uh, this is the reason why we actually uh, ask for funds like Mount Moriah to uh, support us so we buy it here we uh, did a contract with a few companies, food companies. They gave us very good prices. And actually we can buy uh, food for people, needy people here in Elat. So uh, we really appreciate support of Mount Mariah Trust because it really helps us to reach people, to bless them, to be the light of God here in Elat. <laughs>
But beside that, our uh, main purpose in, and goal is to take people out of the street. Uh, for sure also we preach the gospel here, we, we pray with them and everything, but it is not, sadly it is not enough. We, we have to take them out of the street in order uh, to, to provide, you know, real, real help for them. So we try to take them out of the street. People with drugs, they're all uh, heavy users of drugs. So we try to take them to our centers where they can uh, stay with us for a year or two or whatever they need and we provide for them everything and especially we, with the Bible, uh, prayers and uh, we hope that they will become believers and this is our ma main hope main goal and it's the only hope for them it's uh, it's uh, jesus i'm always thinking like in any normal state country the the government would uh, support us because you know people who who were causing problems trouble to the to the state because every drug addict alcoholic homeless it's, it's a lot of money for the for for the for the state for the country like lawyers hospitals uh, police and now, you know, some of these people who were causing problems, now they are working and paying tax. So, so you know, we are doing a, a good job also for the government. But because of the tension between the Orthodox Jews and the Christians, so, you know, we, we don't get any help, any support. Most of the support, or all of the support, come from brothers and sisters from abroad. Mount Moriah Trust, it's one of the, our uh, supporters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was also wondering why, you know, the Lord chose to, to support our ministry through, through many, many friends. Sometimes I thought it could come from one uh, Christian millionaire and he could cover everything. And then I thought that the more supporters we have, more, more people will pray about uh, our ministries. The assistance we get from Mount Moriah Trust is very significant, especially for me personally as my salary is partly covered. I work here from 7 in the morning until 10 or 11 at night. There's a lot of work. And so I appreciate the help of Mount Moriah Trust for me and my family. God has not finished with Israel. Israel is key to the outworking of God's end-time purposes and plans. God's word in Jeremiah 31 verses 35 to 37 and Paul's words in Romans chapters 9 and 11 make that very clear. Did God reject his people? By no means. And he goes on to say, all Israel will be saved. The bride of Christ will then be complete. Jew and Gentile together as one olive tree. Ba'ad Chaim is a national nonprofit organization that began in 1988. We were officially recognized by the government. We have centers across the country of Israel, as down at Eilat and then up in Haifa and T uh, Tiberias, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, where we're sitting right now, all over the country. Ba'ad Chaim's goal is to protect the mother when she's in crisis pregnancy and protect the baby. And we feel that mothers are unprotected in Israel because they're not told their rights about having, about an ability to keep the baby. People feel pressured to have an abortion. And we believe that women deserve the right to be able to know everything and make an educated decision about her pregnancy. The issues that we face, the primary issue is that the Israeli government is paying for the abortions here. We have national health insurance. Women receive free abortions. 98.5% of those applying for an abortion have a free abortion given by the government. This is a very serious problem. And the main point is that we have innocent blood being shed on the land of Israel. And we need to stop that if we want to see the full blessing of God on the people of Israel. I was a very, very uh, bad girl. I, went, I did a lot of uh, fun, you know, in life. And then me and uh, my boyfriend had a baby. 
I'm pregnant and uh, I really want to make an uh, abortion uh, to stop the pregnant. And uh, then somebody told me about Bead uh, Chaim Lilach. And I was about to make, to stop this pregnant. And I called uh, Roberta from Lilach. She told me to call uh, a place to get help. And she really helped me to make a decision to take this, to have this baby, to bring him to life. And she gave me a lot of power. And uh, I get the uh, bears and they help me a lot with the uh, stroller and the uh, closings and everything I need all the time. Every month they give me a card to buy whatever I need to my baby. And that's really helpful because I know that I can buy the food and the <coughs> diapers and whatever I need they gave me. And that's the best choice I never took because of uh, Lilach Be'at Chaim. Because uh, this is the most happiness in my life. And Mount Moriah has been a support to us. And as a matter of fact, you're going to meet one of our counselors who Mount Moriah has been supporting. אז אני הגעתי לעמותה בעד חיים. I came to בעד חיים when I was pregnant. I didn't want an abortion, but was under pressure from my partner to abort the baby. I contacted Sandy, and they took me into the project, helping me. I received a baby bed, stroller, bath, and monthly assistance. At the same time, we had Bible studies. I really took part, and my heart was open to Yeshua. I went to a Messianic congregation. I love Yeshua, pray, and I'm growing in the faith. I want to say thank you to the Mount Moriah donors who have helped me with my salary, because I'm a single mother with two children, and my mother lives with us. This assistance gives me breathing space. I'm so thankful. Mount Moriah has helped us to support a few of our women who have come to know the faith and they have helped them to grow. And um, it's been a tremendous blessing for us to be able to be supported in this way. And also, Kathy and Tony are fabulous people who have a big heart and they love us and love our moms. So I'm just blessed to work with them because they care about us. And I just, I want to say something else, which is that Ba'ad Chaim, of course, helps everybody. We don't care what they believe, what nationality, what race. The only thing we sort here is our laundry. We don't sort anything else by color. We care about people. And we have saved, since we began our special project, Operation Moses, we've been able to save more than 2,000 lives. God has really enabled us to make an impact on Israeli society. The heart of the Lech Lecha ministry is basically to see young Israeli believers being discipled, being followers of Yeshua, being grounded in the Word of God. And in order to do this, we run different various programs. We started in 2001 with our first programs, which we still run. It's a three-month program of living together, studying the Word of God, different Pastors and, and teachers come in and are part of the study program and while studying we travel the land, we evangelize, we do volunteer work, try to live out the kingdom as we live together. This is our main program. Beside this we run different other programs encouraging the young people in their walk with the Lord. If it's to go out into society to be, to be light here in this land, also abroad, sending outreach teams to Africa and another program where we are involved in is a pre-army course to prepare them spiritually and mentally for their army service. Mount Moriah Trust is helping us to, to support students coming to our program. What happens, many of these students who come, they don't have the finances to really pay their study fees. And, and so Mount Moriah Trust comes in exactly in this place to help those who are not able to pay them whole amount and this is basically the big big need in the program for the young Israelis coming out of the army 
and helping them, coming alongside them. So thank you so much for your support and your help. So I've been a participant at the Lech Lecha program, which has been a huge blessing for my life. Uh, I've been able to be here through receiving a scholarship from uh, Mount Moriah Trust and uh, just being part of Lech Lecha, uh, God's used it really to touch my life and to, to touch the lives of many young people here in the land of Israel. Without the support of Mount Moriah, uh, what it means is basically that some of these students who ever get uh, part of the scholarship or whom they help to come into Lech Lecha, Maybe they couldn't come uh, or would have a hard time to be able to do so. So it's a big help. And this is the main need basically to support Lech Lecha to, to, for scholarship and for all the other finances it costs to take these students in. So thank you. If the Lord touches your heart to join him in his work, you can rest assured that every penny that you donate will go to the needy believers. Nothing is taken out for administration or expenses. All that is covered privately.